Well, good evening. Good evening. I have to be honest and tell you guys that I'm a little bit nervous to come here tonight. It's been a few months since I've preached. I, I don't get to preach as much as I usually do. I was telling these brothers earlier that I'm I'm the only unemployed pastor in the bunch. <laughs> and I was I was thinking to myself, why in the world would Chris invite me? Why would Pastor Chris have me go on after the man who was mentored by the doppelganger, doppelganger of Richard Nixon, who is Johnny Hunt? <laughs> why would he have me come here to preach God's glory? And I'm just so appreciative of it. And he said he's not going to compliment himself. That's why I'm hate to be here. You're a great preacher. Chris is one of the best preachers around. He's a great theologian. He's the one that, that me and some of my friends go to when we have questions and, and concerns and, and need to, to pick through the Bible. And then I was, I was not only nervous to come tonight, I almost just decided to turn around because I had this personal emergency because the top button of my jacket popped off early. I've lost weight and the button still pops off. And so what's the point of going on a diet? That's right. But I came anyway. And I'm so thankful that I'm, that I'm able to be before you all to share with you one of the sayings of the Savior on the cross. But we'll get there. I was also nervous because the last time I did this, um, Ms. Ramona was timing us, and I went to the fellowship hall afterward, and I didn't know what was going on, and they were talking, and she said, no, 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 well, Brian was first, and I was thinking in my mind, oh, thank you, right in front of your husband, saying I was the best preacher there. <laughs> and what she was really saying was that I went far and away the long <laughs> You know, some of you guys are listening to me tonight, and I... I don't do a lot without a specific purpose. Some of you have laughed with me for a moment. Some of you think I'm very obnoxious. Those are the ones that know me the best. <laughs> there's, a, there's a rare, there's a segment of one here in the building, and that's Pastor Chris, and he's like, Brian has that weird look in his eye, and he doesn't even seem like he started yet. I'm really worried what he might say over the next few minutes. <laughs> do I need to go pull him off the stage? <laughs> but all of you have an opinion. And as we have progressed in the story of humanity, it seems as though we've gone beyond this era that we call postmodernism, where it was not a good way of thinking because everyone wanted to question authorial intent. We all wanted to redefine what the authors actually wanted to write. Like if I wrote, the sky is blue, you guys might say, well, he didn't really mean the sky was blue. He was talking about something else within his car. He was sad or whatever. We, we would want to question the intent of the author. Now, I think we've gone to a, another bad echelon of philosophy in the post-truth era. Some of you have listened and made your opinion about whether or not you think I'm a good speaker or a good comedian or, or whatever it may be. And that is etched in stone. You believe that to be true. But I want to tell you as we begin, as we talk about the spectrum of what it looks like to recognize and what it looks like to look at the very same thing and not recognize, I want you to know you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your own truth. Amen. God owns the truth. Amen. The author and perfecter of our faith is the truth. Amen. And we have no right to question it. We have no right to bend it, twist it. We have no right to wrap anything else around the cross. We have no right to put ourselves where Jesus should be. We have no right to even hold the church up where Jesus should be because without Jesus, the church is still bound for hell. And as I, I looked at this saying, there are two thieves one thief recognizes, one thief doesn't. And then Jesus says, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And I'm going to save talking about what paradise might be for all of you Sunday school nitpickers. You run with that on Sunday. Talk about what, what paradise could be. All I know is that my very next moment I'm with Jesus. Yeah. 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 Want to focus in just for a couple of minutes on the two thieves, and how one thief mocked up on the cross, mocked Jesus, 
to his face while he's dying, while he's been convicted of a crime. And while another man is convicted of a crime, he looks over and sees the, the blood pouring down Jesus' face, sees that he's beaten, and sees that he's hanging on a cross and recognizes that he is innocent. You know, there was a, a piece of paper I was going to bring with me today, but in, in my angst of popping my button while I was changing at work, I, I left it. But I have a two-year-old, which is a life-changing experience, because it's not nearly as fun as what you people said it was going to be. <laughs> Grandparents, you can give them all back to me when they're crying. But, but there's a picture, and it's of Curious George, and no, I didn't buy the coloring book from Lifeway. It came from the other stores, it came from Walmart, so it's okay. And there's a picture of Curious George. And on it, it's just scribbled a bunch of brown and a bunch of green. Like, about as hard as, as my little girl could just scribble all over. And I'm not just proud that she can color better than me. <laughs> I'm proud because she's growing. You guys, you guys know that. I'm, I'm proud, and I was thinking about earlier, and I, I got tears in my eyes, because last night, my, my daughter, she goes to bed. She asks if she can sing, Jesus loves me. <laughs> But if you had that picture, and you saw that picture laying on the ground, if I left here and just dropped it on the ground, you would look at it and say, oh, that's trash, I'm going to rip that up and throw it away. And you just get rid of it. But when I look at it, we, we look at it as something to hold dear. If you've ever been to an art museum, if you went with me, you might say, oh, that is beautiful. I'd say, I don't know what that, why you had any emotion whatsoever. <laughs> now, some of you like to go to the beach. You don't want to take me. Pastor Joey has a tan 366 days a year. <laughs> you can tell he loves the beach. You take me to the beach and you're going to be like, I'm going to go for a nice cool dip in the water. I'm going to tell you that you're getting in some gross water with a bunch of dirt and diseases in it. Amen. <laughs> it's a matter of perspective. You look up at night and you see the stars in the sky. You can look at it as a bunch of balls of gas or you can look at it as evidence of our Yahweh God that put those stars in the sky Amen. and gave them each a name. On one hand, we have a man who mocked. On the, other man, we, we, on the other hand, we have a man who believed. The point, I believe, in that particular sentence and this particular narrative within these seven sayings would, would be that to let you know that Jesus saves. That Jesus can save even, even the dirtiest of sinners. That Jesus saves by grace and grace alone. There's nothing you can do to earn it. Why? Because Jesus died the death that you and I deserved. Amen. So we could have life with him. Yes, We're judged in light of him when we are born again in him. I get very frustrated when we have events like this and we use the bad criminal, the one that doesn't recognize as kind of our rallying cry, our cheering cry, oh, that guy's dumb. How did he not get it? There were already rumors. People, he obviously had heard the stories of this guy's miracles. How in the world could he not understand that there's something different about this guy? I get frustrated with that line of thinking. Because <coughs> we forget kind of sinner that we are. And honestly, we forget how sometimes we as church people are a hindrance to evangelism ourselves because we're so caught up and blinded by our own sin that we don't look anything like Jesus. Yeah. We, don't look any, we don't look anything like someone that worships the Savior that died a brutal death in our place. The great theologian Ricky Bobby from movie, Talladega Nights. He once said, you're either first or you're last. So it's a comedy movie, by the way, that, that joke fell flat. So you know, like <laughs> i tell you this. Sometimes we want to think that it's okay to have Jesus in our list of priorities. And, and of course you all know the right thing to say. You would never outright say Jesus is just really in my top five list. But the difference in making Jesus second, making Jesus tenth, and making Jesus last, is nothing. It's all the same hell. Yeah. 
The difference in not putting Jesus first is the difference between death having a sting or not. The difference in Jesus being the priority, not the pantheon of other gods, is eternity. <coughs> the great Martin Luther said that we should be in awe that we are not so utterly moved by this that we do nothing other than fall on our knees and worship. We should feel the weight of 10,000 sons in our soul all the time because of what Jesus did. Looked over a thief like that and said, today you will be with me in paradise. And what did that thief do? He believed. <coughs> Friend, if you believe, live a life like you believe. Live a life where there can be no other opinion that God believes. That couple believes. We see them want to look more and more like their Savior every day. I believe there's no alternative for the believer. Amen. And I know that maybe you wanted to hear me crack some more bad jokes, but that was all the bad jokes I can muster. <laughs> the reality behind this is that when grace saves us, grace changes us. Mm -hmm. When we come together for Easter weekend, it's not about ham. It's not about family gatherings. It's not about any of that. And all that stuff is wonderful. It's about Jesus looking at us when we are at our worst and we have done nothing to prove ourselves good, saying, Today you'll be with me in paradise. Amen. 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 Amen.